the Lord made the harvest to come to you in an uncommon way. So even though there are things that the Holy Spirit will use you to do to set in motion the harvest, it's still going to come to you in an uncommon way because he want to be able to get the glory when he translates you from one level of life to the next. The whole thing that the Lord aims to do with man is to show man the greatness of his power to provide. You look at God, he makes Adam, then he pits him in a mode of provision. If you look at when the Lord Jesus takes the disciples into that mountain, uh, up on that mountain, he wanted to show them his provisional power. Every moment he's looking to manifest the provisional glory that he has. So your harvests are always going to come to you through a supernatural way. Even though God is using you to do things that you can see with your own eyes, you can view it with your own eyes, see yourself doing it, whether it be go to work, whether it be um, having uh, uh, decisions that you make, having things that you do. Ultimately, it is the Lord that's going to bring the results. So he has you get six barrels. And he has you put water in the barrels. But the wine is always going to come from him. I look back at my life and I'm still looking at my life today because I'm still sowing today. That's the wild thing. Like today I'm still sowing. I'm still honoring God with finances and I'm in a leadership. You know, I'm handling stuff. I, I'm an overseer of so much stuff, but I'm still sowing. I'm still honoring. And I'm walking in that grace of meditating the seed, sowing the seed, reaping the harvest. And as I reap a lot of harvests, one thing that I'm catching is that my mindset is constantly evolving into the supernaturality of how harvests come. They're not going to come to you just because, you know, you're doing stuff in the natural. They come to you because you are in the consciousness of the miracle love of God. His love is a miracle and his love does miracles. So when he loves you, he'll have you do your part. You put in the six barrels, you put in the water in the barrels, but he going to ultimately turn it into wine. The wine is a revelation that God is the one that gives the increase. And that's what the word of God was talking about. God gives the increase. So the wine is a revelation that God gives the increase. Increase cometh to you by God's supernatural power. He has a power within himself to make provision get to you. And he has you do your part. But ultimately, it's going to be by his mighty spirit that he brings provision, wealth, and abundance to you. Think about it. You can apply for the job, but it's the Holy Ghost that causes the person heart to like you and see a need to hire you. You can go ask for the silver and the gold of Egyptians, but the Lord got to intoxicate them to give Moses and the children of Israel the silver and the gold. So when you ultimately look at all throughout wealth transferences in the Bible, it's God that's speaking to that king and telling him, this is Abraham's wife. Don't touch her. It's God that brings a plague throughout their kingdom. And now they want to bless Abraham and give him all type of wealth. But look, is God doing that? So you got to see that as a sower. Saints, in this life, people will wrong you now, even in business, even if you pay them. People will wrong you, they'll do you dirty. You could do somebody right, even in business, and they'll still wrong you. So what's the solution for that? You have to depend on God's power. When you put your faith in God's power, he does things for you to make things right. Even when things are wrong. Remember, there are going to be people that you meet sometimes that wrong you for no reason. Why? Why? But you're going to need God's power. 
You're going to need his spirit to help you and bring justice to you. When you are so a God brings you justice. That means that wherever you've been mistreated or done wrong, he replays back the situation so that you can be done right. When you are a sower, even when you're in a situation where it's like you're losing, God will bring you the victory and make it right. You're not always going to be in a situation where people respond to you correctly. There are going to be some things where you get scammed or people attempt to scam you. You're going to have situations where even though things are supposed to go a certain way, somebody's will changes and they don't want to listen to God. So God's plan is not going to happen the way it was supposed to happen. That's going to happen. You have to sow and honor God because you need him in this life. You need him in this life because you can't bank on people's heart. People's heart change. Even if they are in the light today, they may be in the darkness three years from now, two years from now, one year from now, six months from now, three months. You can't live in fear of that. You, that's why you do right by God so that right will come to you either way. Now, here's a lot of times the harvest don't come to you through the way that you think it should come. Let me give you an example. Like say somebody, say you just, uh, you stayed at the hospital with somebody on life support and then they come back conscious and then now they cursing you out. They got energy and blah, blah, blah. They saying they stuff out. And you're like, wow, I did good to this person. Now the person not doing good back to me. Let me show you an example. So that as a sower, you don't let unforgiveness and resentment into your heart that could block the harvest because bitterness is a part of weariness. Bitterness is a part of weariness. Remember that bitterness is a part of weariness. So when you get bitter, you also get weary at the same time simultaneously. And you may not even be conscious of it. There are some qualities that when you walk in them, you are exemplifying weariness, which cancels the harvest manifestation. So that person gets out after life support. You've been there every day with them and then they cuss you out. You're talking bad about you. And in your heart, you could get discouraged and even look at God like, wow, I'm reaping bad for what I did good. But in all actuality, you're reaping bad from a person that you sold good into. But you're not reaping bad from God. Watch this here. God hasn't spoke up yet. Like, like. America has done a lot of crafty stuff. I mean, like we can act like we don't see it and we can act like we didn't watch it. America has done a lot of crafty stuff. And we, we're not going to talk too much about it. God has not responded yet fully. You know what I'm saying? So you might look at it and be like, well, how could... Crookedness go on and right in front of us. Yeah, yeah. But there is a lifting up. There is a time frame. Israel, they did Benjamin Netanyahu dirty. I mean dirty. When that happened, it looked gloomy. But God responded in 2023 on our calendar. In the month of October. And he pit Benjamin Netanyahu. As prime minister. As the one over Israel. When you are sower. There is a due season. That's why you don't let yourself. Get so involved about. What's happening. And let the issues occur in your heart. Concerning the issues. That's on the outside. Don't let the issues on the outside take you out because there is something else going to happen. And that is the Lord will respond to the situation because you have sown good. That's why I think it's Proverbs 16, 20, or I think it's Proverbs 16. It says, whoever handles the matter wisely shall find good. That's sowing. That's sowing. Not even just sowing money, that's sowing the right attitude, right response, right behavior, right conduct, right reactions, right decisions. It said that you're going to find good. That's harvest. 
that means that you will discover the goodness of God towards you. Now, you may not experience, and most times you're not going to experience the goodness of God towards you from the person that should be exemplifying the goodness of God towards you because you have been good to them, but you will get the goodness from God. So it's a win-win situation. I'm in real deep thought about this because the harvest comes to you through a miracle pathway. And it, it may not come to you through who you think it should come or when you think it should come, but it always comes. There are several of you are on this line right now. You are months away from a six figure miracle, literally. And I'm not talking about like you making it happen, like you 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 saved up money, blah, 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 and now I got to six figures. No, I'm not talking about that. There are six figure investors that are a part of the schedule. I mean, like meeting you in February. I'm talking about meeting you in March. I'm talking about meeting you towards January 25th. There are several of you are on here that have a miracle investor with a six figure assignment. For those of y'all don't know what six figure is, I'm talking about a hundred thousand plus. That's what I mean. Because this was a part of the schedule of God, and because you have chosen the Spirit and listened to the Spirit, this was on the spiritual path. Are are you hearing me? When you sow and you listen to God and finances, there's something already scheduled in the harvest bracket that you desire, that you want. The harvest is always pleasant. That's why there's such a fight that Satan pits up against you so that you won't even receive your sowing anointing. Like many people lose the fight to Satan stopping them from sowing, but they don't understand Satan stopping you from reaping. Like, <laughs> TF. Like when, when, when Satan stopped you from sowing, then Satan just stopping you from reaping. So like, what's really going on? You, you good with that? Well, I ain't sow, you know, I ain't, I ain't lose nothing. Yeah, but when, when, when people reaping, it's like, bam. Now you, now you in the cut, you ain't got it. Now you were supposed to receive, you ain't got it. The harvest always come through a miracle pathway. And so that's why you be faithful because you are bound with blessings when you're faithful. And the harvest is always more than what you want. It's more than what you need. The harvest is always going to come greater than what you was expecting. This is why you always keep your mind in the, 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 the bracket of, of inspiration and encouragement and excitement. Because the harvest is always a better life. A better path, a better living arrangements, better clothes, better shoes, better hair, better eyes, better nose, better health. Your body start working better. Your your parts start working better. Did you know even your sexual parts working is a harvest? Don't get it twisted. God will give you a harvest of you having the ability to even operate in the anointing of sex towards your divine partner. That's a harvest. You need the Lord to give you a harvest concerning everything because if you let your life just go with this, uh, the flow, imagine Satan is looking to flow against you all the time. Looking to make a spectacle, looking to bring shame to you. And saints, God take you to the depths of every anointing when you honor him. He take you to the depths of every anointing when you honor him. When you honor him, when you sow in money, you put in money into the gospel, he take you to the depths of every, every anointing. Every anointing, he take you to the depths. You find yourself doing things better than you ever did it before because you're anointed by God to do it. He'll even, he'll train you how to meditate the word better. You'll have ideas of how to do stuff better. The anointing of better. The grace of better. It, it works in the sower's soul.